Hey everybody, so in this lecture we're going to be talking about pressure, and then we're going to talk about hydrostatic pressure. So two equations, I hope not too many. So first of all, pressure I think is a fairly intuitive concept when I explain it. So imagine that I were to, for example, to give you a bit of a push, right? So I were to take my hand and push on you with uh, a certain amount of force, right? Let's say, for example, I push on you with 10 newtons. Now, my hand, of course, is, is fairly big, right? So my hand is going to look like this, let's say. This is a very bad looking hand. Let me fix the hand. So this is the thumb, one finger, two, three, four. And so again, my hand is not that big, but you understand. So that force that I apply on you with my hand is going to be distributed over that entire area, right? So this entire area is going to push on you. And so you're going to be feeling that force, but it's probably not going to hurt. Now, what would happen if I were to, instead of pushing on you with that force with my hand, I were to push on you with that force with a needle, right? So in this case, of course, that's going to hurt a lot, and the needle is actually going to probably puncture your skin, right? And so why does that occur? Why does a needle uh, hurt, and why does it puncture your skin, whereas, for example, a hand doesn't, even if we use the same force, right? And so this is the concept of pressure. Pressure, so now we get to the equation that we want to use. So pressure, or P, is equal to the force that we apply over the area over which it's applied. So although we applied the same force, let's say we apply a force of 5 newtons, because we use the needle, we applied it over a much, much smaller area, right? Uh, and so the area is much, much smaller, and so the pressure ends up being higher, right? And so that's why it hurts, and that's why we, for example, could puncture... Uh, you know, skin, or we can puncture a paper, for example, with a needle, it's because a needle will concentrate all of our force over a much smaller area, and so the pressure increases, right? And so this is the basic idea of pressure. Now, the SI units for pressure are what we call pascals, pascals. And one pascal is equal to one newton that's applied over a given area of one meter squared. And so one Pascal, again, equal to one Newton per one meter squared. So it's, I think, fairly intuitive and not too difficult. Uh, and this is why SI units are so useful and so easy to understand. And they really make physics much easier to understand. Now, more commonly, what, we, what we'll very often see is we'll see kilopascals, right? So uh, that's abbreviated as KPA. So K... PA, and one kilopascal, of course, is equal to 1,000 pascals. And uh, so this is, you know, we're often dealing with larger pressures, especially when we're talking about the MCAT. So we'll often use kilopascals rather than just pascals, which, again, should be fairly intuitive because it's just uh, 1,000 times the pascal. And so there's another unit that we'll often encounter on the MCAT, and that's atmospheres. And uh, one atmosphere is equal to about, or we'll say equal to one atmosphere, which is abbreviated ATM is equal to, uh, we'll do this, equal to about 100 kPa, kilopascals. And it's actually precisely 101.3, but we can kind of consider it to be 100 because for the MCAT, again, we don't have a calculator, so we, we want to estimate this stuff, right? So one atmosphere, what exactly is an atmosphere? So this unit of one atmosphere, of course, comes from the concept of atmospheric pressure, which is the idea that when you're at sea level, you're actually experiencing quite a bit of force uh, coming from the atmosphere above you. So you don't feel it because your body has adjusted to it. But if you're standing, you're sitting like this, right? And uh, you've actually got a column of air going all the way up to the atmosphere. And it's quite significant, the pressure. Again, it's about 100 kPa, which is you know, a lot. And uh, so all of this pressure is going on, is on top of you at sea level at any one time. Now, uh, of course, when you're... Um, when you go higher, when you, for example, if you go up a mountain, then the pressure is going to decrease. And if you go lower, the pressure is going to increase. Uh, so this is just at sea level. But uh, this is the pressure that your body experiences uh, from the atmosphere at any one time. Now, this gets us to the idea of hydrostatic pressure, because hydrostatic pressure is the pressure that is experienced when you dive. Now, this slide is a little bit messy, so I'll try and clean it up. Um, so when you dive in water, right, so we said that if you go lower, for example, below sea level on earth, right, so let's say you're still on land, but you go into a valley, 
you're going to increase experience slightly higher pressure because the the column of air above you is a little bit higher than it was before right but it's not going to be significant the it's not going to be very very substantial you're not you're not really going to feel it you will kind of feel it when you're, for example, in an airplane, the pressure in an airplane is lower, but again, it's not not too significant. But where you do feel it, of course, is in water because water is much, much more dense than air. And uh, so, of course, that column of water that's above you when you dive is going to be higher. It's going to be heavier. It's going to be uh, more dense, right? And so it turns out that the equation for what we call hydrostatic pressure, which is pressure underwater or pressure in a given uh, diving in a given liquid is equal to hydrostatic pressure. So pressure, and we'll say hydrostatic. And hydrostatic means, hydro means water, static means stationary. So this assumes that the water is not moving. When water starts moving, of course, its pressure is going to change. And we're going to talk about that in the next lecture. Uh, but in this lecture, again, water is stationary. So hydrostatic pressure is equal to the density of the liquid which we represent with the, uh, with the Greek letter rho, which we talked about last time, right? Times g, and g is the, um, the gravitational constant, times h, times the height, uh, the height of the column above you. So one thing that we can do here is we can, uh, we can actually compare hydrostatic pressure at different points underwater, right? So for example, let's say you are swimming one meter below the surface, right? Versus, let's say you're swimming 100 meters below the surface, then the pressure is going to increase, the hydrostatic pressure is going to increase 100 times, right? 100 times the hydrostatic pressure from one meter below to 100 meters below. And uh, so this is why, for example, pressure increases so substantially uh, at the bottom of the ocean. So uh, there was a recent story, of course, of, a, uh, of an underwater submersible that was used to uh, to see the Titanic. To People would take the submersible to go and visit the Titanic. And so very tragically, there were five people in that submersible, and it's believed there was a defect in it. And very tragically, those five people lost their lives because that submersible, uh, because it was so far underwater, uh, if there was a defect in its structure, then it would, uh, would kind of crumple up like a soda can because of that massive pressure underwater. But getting back to the equation, we can use the equation for two different purposes. We can either calculate the absolute pressure uh, at a given point underwater, right? So the absolute pressure, for example, here, Right, which is going to be equal to rho g h, or what we can do is we can use it to calculate relatively the, the difference in pressure between two different points in the liquid. Right, In this case, of course, it's going to be just equal to uh, the difference in heights. Right, So you just multiply it by uh, height 1 over height 2, and you get the answer. Right, So for example, if we're 10 meters below versus 1,000 meters below, then of course it's going to be, the pressure is going to be 100 times between here and here, right? So I think fairly straightforward, not too difficult. And so even actually, you, you can even feel this, uh, you know, in short distances. So if you've ever gone swimming, for example, and, and dove to the bottom of the pool, you might feel your ears pop a little bit because your ears are adjusting to the slightly increased pressure at the bottom of the pool, right? It's not really harmful for you, but, uh, you know, it does feel kind of strange. And it's similarly, when you're in an airplane and the airplane is going up, uh, you also feel that popping in your ears because in that case, the pressure... Uh, higher up is a little bit lower. And so the plane's cabin is actually pressurized, but uh, you know that, that brief moment of pressurization, you do feel in your ears a little bit. And actually when divers go down very, very low, they actually do have to go up slowly because they have to adjust their bodies to, uh, to that pressure. If you go up too quickly, uh, you can actually die. And so it's very, very dangerous. Um, but this is the basic concept of hydrostatic pressure and uh, pressure in general. So I'll try and organize this slide. Uh, so that you can kind of understand it, you can really see what's going on. But this is really what we need to know for pressure for the MCAT.